calls the base system, which is basically this this ISO. Um, you can put other things in there. There it, there is not only base. You can have uh, packages or meta packages, which are bundles of packages. You can install those while you're installing the base system. But as a very base concept, you have just pack strap mount base. And it just goes, and you can see it's going through and just basically doing everything for us. We're not having to say yes, proceed with installation or anything like that. It's just doing it. Now that might take a little while. So we might just walk down the rest of this and um, be done. So configuring the system, FS tab. So the FS tab, I'll just show you on a minute. Okay, that's the FS tab. So the FS tab is what um, file systems are mounted at boot or uh, are available for mount uh, if they're not specified for at boot. Um, here we have it defined by UUIDs. You can also define it for the device path. The reason that you would want to do UUID versus the device path is the UUID stays the same forever. Uh, the device path, however, can change. So if you have um, a desktop and you plug in your 400 gig drive and later on you plug in a 300 gig drive depending on how things are set up and like which SATA bus ID or like which PETA bus or whatever you're plugging into, the next time you boot that machine, you may end up with a different device ID for the drive that you're trying to boot from, which would be catastrophic when you're trying to boot the operating system. And so UUIDs basically null that out. They allow you to just say, find this device, and that's your boot device. Any question? Yeah, well, no, I was saying you can change the UUID. Well, you, yes, you can yeah. change it, but... It's just, it's just not going to do it on its own. Right. So. Um, and the UUID is a generated ID. They are fairly unique. They can be repeated, but it's extremely improbable. Just like MD5 uh, hashes, you can... Necess not you can have two images and they're the same of the A5 hash, but they're not necessarily the same. I mean, you only got one twenty-five million chance. Or right, it's very low. Uh, and if you take like for an MD5 hash, if you do an MD5 hash and you look at the hashes and they're the same, and then you look at the sizes and they're the same, you can be fairly um, <coughs> fairly sure that it's it's the same image. Green shawl. Yeah, it, you if. You would want to use SHA or SHA-256 or SHA-1 or something else to get a better uh, yeah. knowledge of that. So that's what the, the file system tab does. <coughs> um, then you ch root, which is basically what that does is it, it troots into the system. You're becoming inside of that system. So you're doing the devices, like it, it, your shell thinks that the system it's ch rooted into is the root system. So when we mount it off a of mount, we if we ch root into it, now mount is now root. So if I cd slash, I'm now logically in slash mount, but if I do, you know, pwd, it says you're you're at root, you're slash. Um, and that allows you to use the system tools and everything that are native to that particular system. So uh, in in a in this case, like let's say that uh, I had a Gentoo system I was trying to rescue and I had a mint key. I could plug the mint key in, I can use ch root to ch root into the Gentoo Gen system, and then I can use all of the Gen Gentoo packages, the installer, the uh, every like the, the grub, everything that I would use on my native Gentoo system is there and available for me to use, whereas I couldn't do that from the mint system. It's good stuff. <laughs> um, time zone, you set the time zone by linking in a time zone thing. This is, this is what the, the installers do for you generally uh, automatically, but this is a manual install. Uh, hardware clock, if you want to tell it to you know, sync up, you can tell it to sync up. Uh, 
locale generation, so you set your locale, so if you want to have a couple of different languages or anything like that, you set up a locale and you generate it. Um, keyboard layout, if you want something other than English, US, then you can change that as well. Host name, Etsy host name, that's just whatever you want to call the box. Um, you can also add it to Etsy host if you'd like to, but it's not strictly necessary. Uh, the network configuration is a whole bag of worms, and they have a whole separate page for that. Um, and I would encourage you to read that, but it's getting kind of late for this one, so I'm just kind of walking through this. Uh, init RAM FS, it's not usually com uh, necessary, but uh, you can you can go ahead and do it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, Making it FS is, is necessary for things like encrypted routes and stuff. You have to have enough of the kernel to actually boot the um, encrypted route, and so you have to have uh, a and that's CPIF. You have enough to encrypt it, unencrypted, you the encrypted part. You're basically taking a lot of the um, drivers and stuff and extrapolating them and putting them into the boot partition, as opposed to just having them in the mainline uh, kernel, which sits in the um, in the root file system usually. Um, and then you set your root password, so don't forget to do that. Because <laughs> you'll reboot and you're like, oh. <laughs> and it'll be locked. Uh, so you'll have to reboot back and then you'll have to chroot and change your password or manually change the shadow file or whatever you want to do. You set up your bootloader, uh, which is another thing that uh, you don't have to do on any of the other ones, is uh, you're, you're going to set up grub um, or system D boot, whatever that is. Um, and that basically what it does is Grub actually has two loaders. It's got one in the MBR, which loads the initial package, and then that basically says Grub 2 is, or Grub Layer 2 is uh, over here, and it points at the boot partition, and that was weird. Must have been a power flicker. Hope the, that's alright. Um, so you would set up Grub, Grub would point at your kernel and your boot partition, and then go on and on. And then you reboot and you're done. And then uh, for adding and removing packages, now now Arch is not going to have a GUI when you start, unless you tell it to have a GUI. Arch is going to give you terminal, and that's it. Um, you need to install your GUI and install everything and use Pacman for that. Uh, Pacman is the package manager for Arch. Fun. A little better than eMerge. I like eMerge. I do too until you start getting doing, uh, blocking. Well, well, that and, and, and um, uh, conflicts. Yeah. The, the the most harrowing thing for you to eMerge is when Bash is blocking what you're trying to install, <laughs> and so you have to unmerge Bash while you're running Bash. And then merge what you're trying to do, and then remerge Bash, and hope your system doesn't crash while you don't have a shell, <laughs> because you're running the shell in the uh, RAM. Right. <laughs> so that's it. Does anyone anybody have any questions? I shouldn't have closed that desktop before I asked that. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Oh, when you're switching terminals. Mm -hmm. Does it also get rid of your history? Uh, no, the history is distinct from the, um, the, buffer. the buffer. So the buffer is something that's in the TTY, okay. uh, whereas the history is part of whatever shell you're running. And in most cases nowadays, it's batch. So the history is... Um, still there. Yeah, it's going to be still there. Now... How about multiple tabs, though? Yeah, so if, like, let's say I log in here, and I do, you know, echo, whatever, and then I go back to this tab and I come back, you know, it's there. Now, it only commits when you exit the shell. And so if I actually didn't want anybody to know what I was doing, I could just, uh, if I do env, and put that in the list, there's all these environment variables that are part of my shell. There's my path, there's, you know... Log name, all these, all these things in here. One of them is hist file. Let's see where is he? Hist file. Okay. 
Okay, so there's my hist file. So I'm actually running zsh. Okay. And so what I can do is I can actually just say, um, Well, that variable name is very suggestive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you can actually unset the history file or like echo something else into it and <laughs> it'll prevent it from saving it when you exit. You said it's dead and all. Yep. Any other questions? I found out on Wikipedia what DNF is. Ooh, what is it? And you'll like this. It's called Dandified. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's acronyms on acronyms here. Yeah. I thought it was something else, but again, suggestive. Did not finish. All right, well, I'm going to steal the projector for, go for a minute. Good to go. Did you find your slides? There we go. All right, where's my mouse? Oh, dear God. In the few files you installed, or the few packages, Avage is always a good one to make sure you have enough entropy for any encryption you're using. There you go. So, um, when you install CentOS Minimum, Minimal, this is the default screen you get, and you select Install CentOS instead of Install Fedora. That's why it says, does this look familiar? Yeah, select your language. Look familiar? <laughs> exactly. looks like it, yeah. It's because it's the exact same installer. It works great in Fedora. Therefore, once it's proven in four releases, they use it in Red Hat. Um, here, I selected a four gigabyte hard drive because when you're installing server version, that's really all you need. Um, and I yeah, told it you, to do automatic, did you automatic that partition. It needed uh, 13 gigs. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, in CentOS, um, you actually use the network setup to set up your network. <laughs> Unlike Fedora, which told you to use the GUI. Uh, if this is a server, you better use a static IP address, not DHCP. And you use the IPv4 settings tab in there to do it. And then it starts it and it starts its package install, and you set your root user or your root password, and you create your user. Reboot and test your network. Looks exactly like the Fedora install. Cool. That's it. I wish right. it would have worked that way from the beginning. <laughs>